In this video clip, I will show you how to do panel data models in Stata. Please make sure that you have watched the lecture video as well as the example before you proceed here. So I have opened here um, a do file editor in Stata where the program is located and you can download this from my website. And I have also executed the program so I have all the output here on the right hand side. So um, for this example, we will be using a data set on wages. And this is the name of the file that we will be using. And I have saved my data file into this location. Uh, and you can download this from the website. Uh, so the first thing to do is just read in the data and uh, take a look at it. So this is how the data looks like. And if you scroll down a little bit, this is the ID dimension for the data. We have panel data set where we have the first ID, first person, second person, and so, so on, uh, over 500 observations. And for each of these people, we have seven periods of data, see one, one through seven for each of them. And we have a balanced uh, panel data set. And for our dependent variable, we will be using wages or log of wages, L wage. And these are um, the numbers. So the first seven belong to the same first observation. You can see that slightly increasing over time. The next seven belong to the second observation and so on. And then we would use um, experience, experience square and weeks worked and education as our uh, independent uh, variables here. And you can see how like education doesn't vary, at least for the first few observations. Um, okay, so this is how the data looks like. Uh, so the next thing to do is define our global variables. Uh, and for ID, uh, my variable is called ID, and for time, it's called time. And the dependent variable would be L wage, and the independent variables, I have four. So when you use this program, all you have to do is provide the cross-sectional dimension of your data, be it country, firms, or anything, the way it's called in your data set. Then provide time, minutes, months, whatever the time dimension is. Give it the dependent variable here, independent variables here, and provide uh, the correct directory and data uh, and data file. And then you're ready to go. The rest of the program will run with your data, so you don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, so let's go ahead and describe the data. And I'm describing the ID, the time, the, the cross-sectional dimension, time dimension, and then my y and x variables. And you can see here, this is log of wage, years of full-time work, uh, experience for the experience variable, weeks worked, and years of education. So next thing we will do is we, we can summarize the data. And this is uh, how we always summarize the data. And we provide the means and the standard deviations. So these first don't mean anything. Uh, here's the mean for log wage and experience and so on. So one of the things is that this summary here isn't very uh, detailed for panel data models. So I will show you later on how to do a more detailed one. But first, we would need to set the data as panel data. So the first thing is to sort by ID and time. And next, we use the com command XD set to set the data as panel data. And um, we, we provide first the cross-sectional and then the time dimension. And you see panel variable ID, it says strongly balanced. The time variable varies from one to seven, so we have a very balanced data set. Uh, next thing to do is XD describe. And here we have the ID varies from first to 595 observations and T uh, varies from 1 to 7, delta is 1 unit, and so on. We have 7 periods, um, and you can look at the different distribution. Okay, so the most interesting 
table here is XT sum for XT sum arrives and we have to provide the ID, the time, and Y list, next list. This, these are the variables that we're summarizing. And the goal here is not only to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for the overall variation, but break this down for between and within variation. Uh, so as you can see here, and uh, again, you can look at the other video with the example to explain these results. But very quickly here, um, we have, um, obviously ID does not vary over time and the time does not vary over ID. Uh, for the log wage, these, these are the standard deviations. So we see a little bit more between variation than within variation. Uh, for experience, most all the variation is uh, between from one person to the next, not within. Uh, and then for weeks worked, we have about equal number of between and within variation. And for education, we don't have any within variation, which means that in our sample, no one got uh, extra education during the, the period that they were surveyed. Okay, so it's very important that when you produce a table uh, for, for publication, that you have it a little bit more detailed like that with between uh, and within variation. And you, you can also look at um, at uh, some, let's see, you can also interpret these minimum and maximum. So for example, uh, here's the minimum wage in the data and here's the maximum wage in the data. If you look at these for the between, these would be uh, the averages for each individual. So uh, over time, and for with for the within variation, we're going to look at uh, how much each individual observation uh, differs if you take away the overall mean from them. Okay, so again, very rich table that we can use for for uh, for papers. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the different estimators. The first one that we will consider is the pooled OLS estimator, and that's done by just running a simple regression of the Y variable and X variables. So you put the L wage here, and then all the independent variables. Okay, and this is what you get. This is the OLS uh, regression, and you can see that when experience increases, then we have higher um, log wages. Okay. The next estimator that we will consider is the pooled average estimator, and that's uh, accomplished by using XT reg. You put the Y variable and the, all the X variables comma PA for the population average. And here again um, are the results for this. Okay. Then the next estimator that we will talk about is the between estimator. Uh, so that's accomplished by STREG Y variable and then X variable, comma B for the between estimator. And the results are here. Uh, you can see the R square is also broken down for each different variation. Uh, and you can also take a look at uh, the, the different coefficients here. For the between estimator, it means that all the data, data got averaged first and then we are running data on these averages over time. Next is the fixed effects estimator, and you can see the code is exactly the same, STREG, Y, and then X variables, comma, FE, and this is the fixed effects or the within estimator. And uh, notice one very interesting thing that we have here is that education, um, the coefficient for the education variable cannot be estimated because uh, education is a time invariant variable uh, in our data set and therefore when you are taking uh, when you're doing each individual minus its mean uh, that would be a zero and therefore we cannot include this variable anymore so another interesting thing to discuss here is rho and that row is the percent of the variation that's explained by individual specific effects. And that's very high, which is 
which is good in this case because it's not just idiosyncratic idiosyncratic effects okay next uh, we will talk about the first differences estimator and you can do this as a regression of D that this kind of provides difference uh, differences in these uh, for the Y list and X list so instead of just having Y as the dependent variable the dependent variable is yt minus yt minus 1 I should say yit minus yit minus 1 and and same for the independent variables so you can see how this d1 is the first differences which means the uh, the variable experience minus its value in the previous period and again, uh, education cannot be estimated because the years of education doesn't vary from year to year. So when you take differences, that's a zero. Okay, and again, we see a positive effect of experience on, uh, on log wages. So each additional year of experience would bring 11% uh, higher wages. Next is the random effects estimator and you can do that by using streg provide the y and x variable random effects and here's the theta estimator or lambda as we called it in the lecture uh, in the lecture notes so here are results here and then we have rho is the um, percent of variation that's due to the uh, individual specific effects and again, you can look at the the other video for the uh, interpretations on these. Uh, but again, we see that higher experience leads to higher higher wages. So next is how to do the Hausmann test for the fixed versus random effects model in Stata. First of all, you quietly estimate SD reg for the fixed effects model, and then you store these estimates. You call them fixed estimates, and then. You quietly estimate SDREG for the random effects model. You estimate, then you store these estimates as random. And all you have to do then is call the Hausmann and then put the fixed, it's coming from right here, the estimates from the fixed effects model, and random, the estimates from the random effect model. And here's the results that we have here for the Hausmann test. Okay? Um, so we have um, here's the fixed effects coefficients here are the random effects coefficients the difference and then we're we want to see how similar these coefficients are to each other and we have the chi-square statistics and you see that the probability here uh, or the p-value for this chi-square test is very very small which means we have significant results and when we have significant results this means that they differ and we would need to use the fixed effects model. Okay, so the final thing to do is uh, the brush pagan test for random effects versus the OLS and how to do that you estimate the random effects model here and then you use uh, ST test 0 okay and these are the results here and again um, you can see that uh, the p-value is very very small which again means significant results this means that we shouldn't be using the pooled OLS model and we should be using one of the uh, individual specific effects okay so here is one very interesting thing that we can do once we estimated the fixed effects model we could uh, estimate um, those um, individual specific effects and the way to do is to predict the alpha head and then comma u okay so what we are trying to do is predict those alpha i's that we talked about in the lecture notes um, and if you look at the data here's the data and because i have ran the program already these are the alpha heads so look at this first individual these are the alpha alpha i hats for them and notice that they don't they don't differ for for the individual because we have seven time series observations for each individual but this first person gets wages that are higher than predicted by the model this one gets wages that's lower than predicted by the model these 
higher and, and so on. So it means that we don't exactly know what causes it because we don't have those variables in the model that help us explain it. But we know that there is something about this particular individual that that makes them uh, get higher or lower wages as predicted uh, by the model. And we could summarize those alpha hats. And if you summarize it, uh, this is what we get. The, the mean is very close to zero. So basically some of them are positive and like uh, about, you know, positive and some of them are negative. Uh, so some people get higher than predicted and some of them get lower than predicted. Okay, so this was uh, the program for how to do uh, panel data models in Stato. So thank you for watching.